Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and I have been following our adorable little pangolins around. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. But I just watched them have a good breakfast of ants and then he just scurried off into the grasses and already he's so hungry. Look at him. So you really have to keep an eye on your pangolins when you are in the Himalayas biodome because otherwise they will not get enough food. Look at everybody. Come on, little guys. Come on, there's some ants right over here for you. In fact, yeah, there's quite a few ants. So here's another one coming out of the woodwork in order to hopefully eat some ants. But they'll eat pretty much any of the insects in the biodome, I believe. So that hit me when I was reading about that if they would eat the little stag beetles. I wonder if they would. So we're going to try putting some stag beetles down somewhere nearby. Let's put them down right there. And then we'll see if they head over to the stag beetles as well. Okay, so this guy just ate. He ate two whole ants. Look at that. Oh, it's so cute. I don't think we're going to have to worry about our ant population for a little while. Because the pangolins are definitely not the um, ferocious eaters. Oh, here they go. <gasps> Look at everybody coming in for a little, a little earthworm breakfast. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and he's so full now. Oh, my goodness. Look, you can see the earthworms. Oh, that's so cool. Look at everybody. How many earthworms did they eat? So they ate like six earthworms. That's adorable. All right, so our pangolins are doing very well. Our pikas are doing great. And the entire biome seems to be uh, holding itself together pretty well. So I'm very happy. It's already about almost three months old. Yeah, it's almost a three month old biome. So it's doing pretty good. And we're just sort of keeping an eye. Okay, good. Keeping an eye on our Pika populations primarily, and they've been doing really well. And there's only 33 day left, like, days left until they reproduce. Huzzah! So I'm really eager to see the baby Pikas when they finally have some babies. And I think we've been doing pretty good at getting the entire biome sort of established. We have lots and lots of ants everywhere for our little pangolins. We're still hungry, but that's probably just because it takes them so long to get from one food source to another. And we have a few of our small herbivores scuttling around, and they seem to be doing pretty good. So today, today, my friends, I wanted to add in some of our bigger herbivores and maybe even an omnivore or two. So I'm pretty excited about that, but I still feel like the population levels are kind of low um, to jump into something like a red fox or definitely something like the snow leopard or the tiger. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure if we'll put all of those predators in one biodome we might even kind of separate separate Himalayan biodomes and make different mountains that you guys can help me name I do want to get back to that idea of having an entire biodome that I will just like maybe even put a straw poll up for and you guys can vote on what to add in and maybe it'll even be random who knows we'll say something like the forest are rustling with shadows lately and that might be a bunch of peccaries or it might be three jaguars and we'll throw them in there and leave them alone for a week come back and see what happens I think that would be really really fun to do with you guys but yeah, I want to add in the red panda. In fact, I kind of want to add in the red panda like almost right now. And I also want to add in these adorable little guys. Um, maybe some of these guys. Maybe some of these guys. You know what? Let's start unlocking everybody. Let's just go ahead and unlock everything. Mule deer. We might add in some mule deer. Asiatic black bear. So can I afford to unlock everything? I'm starting to run low on my money. I'm going to keep my money. Never mind. <laughs> At least we got mostly there. All right. So I want to add in these tiny little guys. And I want to add in the red pandas. Let's add in the tiny little guys first to these little deer. And learn about them. And then we'll add in red pandas in just a minute. Oh my gosh. <gasps> when they said tiny, they really meant tiny. Oh my goodness gracious. I knew these guys were small because I've seen them once or twice in real life. But look at this. Look at this. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Do you have any idea? You're like a little fairy deer. Oh, you just fell down. <laughs> He's taking a nap. Oh my gosh, they're so cute, you guys. What do we need to do to take care of these tiny things? And apparently they reproduce pretty quickly. They are fruitivores, meaning fruits are their preferred meal. They love to eat fruits that have fallen to the ground, but will consume leaves as well if fruits are scarce. They fall prey to the doles, leopards, and tigers, and other predators. They rely on dense ve vegetation to remain hidden from predators. Since it is considered a tasty snack by so many animals, these little ones use their spots as camouflage and hide in tall vegetation 
vegetation. Besides being a food source for many animals, they are also important seed dispersers for plants. Ooh, that's good to know. So they're found in evergreen and deciduous forest, and there are several different types of them in the wild. Ours is the Indian spotted. Very cool. They live in India and Nepal. Do they extremely small size? They're also known as mouse deer, and that's actually how I know them and where I see them when I bump into them in um, petting zoos, which, you know, you don't really want to encourage petting zoos too much, especially not the good ones, but petting zoos in Texas when I grew up had a lot of these guys. Not to pet because they were pretty skittish, but just to look at because they were a huge draw. And uh, they also mean little goat or a deer and a pig. <laughs> <laughs> There's a name, an Indian name for them that literally means a deer and a pig smushed into one. That's adorable. They have only one offspring at a time, but are able to mate again right after giving birth. So they pump out lots of babies, apparently. They can live about 10 years in the wild. They have been around for a long time. They haven't changed in millions of years and are similar to many extinct ancient species of deer. I had no idea about that. They're nocturnal, solitary animals who prefer to stick to a single home territory all their lives. Uh, they bump uh, mouse deer. I'm just going to call them mouse deer because I don't think I could pronounce that. In neighboring territories, occasionally fight, but generally ignore each other. Like musk deer, mouse deer have canine teeth that they use to fight others of their species. Really? <gasps> That's adorable. However, these teeth are far smaller than the musk deers and sometimes too small to be noticeable when the mouth is closed. So they have little fang teeth. Where'd you go, my little fang toothed ones? <gasps> Here they are. Oh, and they're eating some grass. They're filling up on a little bit of fairy grass. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's put lots and lots of fairy grass over here for them because they're going to have this teensy little territory. Look at them. Look at them skitter all over the place. They're going to have this teensy little territory. Um, oh, but okay. So they were filling up on the, um, they were filling up on the grass, but what they really need are fruits. So let's put a whole bunch of honeysuckles over here, actually, if I can fit some in. I may have needed to place them with a little more care. And then maybe the goji berries. Yeah, let's get honeysuckles and maybe some of the goji berries. Another clump of honeysuckles, perhaps? Put in here. And then hopefully they'll produce fruit. Yeah, there we go. The goji has like leaves and fruit. So hopefully this will produce a little bit of food for them because I didn't mean to stick them into an area that wouldn't be ideal. All right. And then, and then I wonder if they reproduce pretty quickly, even if they just have one baby at a time. I wonder if they'll be able to cope when we add in one of the predators. We'll have to see. All right, come on, goji bears. Come on, goji bears. Don't be so stubborn. Arr. All right, let's see. Maybe I'll find better. Yeah, better luck putting them over here. Okay, there we go. So goji berry over there. And let's get lots of energy, please. Thank you very much. So much energy. Yeah, adding in a higher diversity of animals will hopefully make it so that we'll be able to get more Taito coins from this area as well. All right, so lots and lots of goji berries all over the place for these little ones. Oops, that's bamboo. And then speaking of bamboo, we can try getting the red pandas put down in just a moment. So let's see, blue poppies, joint fur, maybe a little bit more fairy grass scattered here and there because there's lots of things that will eat the fairy grass. All right, and there. And maybe another clump of it over here. There we go. And hopefully it'll spread around the place. All right. So where are you guys and how are you doing? Okay. Whoa, they've actually got a pretty big territory. Oh, goodness. I didn't realize that they had such a large territory. That's really fun. All right. So I might stick some goji berries over in another corner over here too. And then maybe another thing. What's another fruiting thing? They're pretty fast. Oh, pomegranates. Yeah, let's get some pomegranate trees in here for them. Oh, yeah. Look at them. <gasps> Look at how cute. Oh, my goodness. So they're pretty quick. They're not like our pangolins where you kind of have to put down a whole line of ants just and cross your fingers just for them to survive. All right. Come on, pomegranate tree. I know you want to go down here somewhere. You want to be in the shelter of something over here maybe? Come on. Aha. All right, I had it for just a second. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. There we go. All right, so how's this little one doing? They're moving around. Oh, they are looking for the fairy grass. Okay, we'll put down a little bit more fairy grass. And I'll even add in some blue poppies just as decorative pieces over here. Eh, 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 eh. I saw it. I saw it. Aha. There we go. Decorative pieces over there. And then we can put down some more fairy grass, I hope. Maybe. Doesn't want to grow here. Now that's another thing that really you have to accept the reality of. Kind of like last time we were talking about how animals like to be at different um, different levels of vegetation just so that they have some cover. Well, 
you know, plants aren't going to grow everywhere either. Plants are going to be like, nope, this is too rocky soil. I don't want to be here. And that's sort of what we've discussed in our desert biome is that you have to remember that the desert water scarcity and water resources are a huge thing that determine where the plants go. But there we are. Wow, that's really fun. Okay, so we added in our little adorable mouse deer that I am 100% in love with. And hopefully all the plants will spread so that they have enough food. I feel like the grass is starting to spread on its own over here. Pretty sure it's finally starting to happen. So that makes me happy. The poppies too. Hmm. I spy with my little eye a lot more poppies over here than I put down myself. So I'm pretty happy about that. And we have 24 more days before these pikas have some babies. I don't know why the pikas are so hungry all the time. Maybe they need more mushrooms. They really seem to enjoy eating mushrooms. So I will admit I spoil my pikas with lots of mushrooms. Um, but speaking of pikas, I also want to put like a secondary population of pikas. Um, man, <laughs> saying a bunch of P words right next to pika is kind of interesting. But I kind of want to put like a secondary population sort of over here to overlap with this one to see if they can help balance each other out. Kind of do like a chain of pikas that will hopefully balance one another out for when we start adding in the predators. All right, so let's get the pandas in. Pikas, predators, pandas. <laughs> oh my goodness, let's look for a really good spot that has lots of bamboo. I feel like right over here would be a good location. I could be totally wrong, but let's start here. All right, come here, my little red panda. And, boink! <gasps> so happy, so happy! Oh my goodness, I'm so happy right now! Oh my gosh! Their animations are so cute! Oh, hang on, I want the territory markers off so I can just admire them! Oh my goodness, you guys! You guys! Oh my gosh, he even does a happy little wiggle. And there's the mouse here just jumping around in the background. Oh, you're kidding me! Oh my goodness! Okay, okay, going nuts with the pictures. Can't help it. Super happy. Pandas everywhere. Oh, they make little noises too! All right, let's pop over and learn a little bit about them. Their diet, much like the giant panda, the red panda's diet is almost exclusively bamboo. Red pandas are omnivorous though and will eat bird eggs, berries, and small lizards. Oh, I would love to see small lizards scurrying around. That would be so cute. The red panda's main predator is the snow leopard. When in danger, red pandas take to the trees to escape. Red pandas love bamboo, so bamboo leaves are, but bamboo leaves are poor in nutrients. So rather than look for healthier food, red pandas lounge around and don't expend a lot of energy for about half the day. Oh my goodness, that sounds true. If you ever see them like in a zoo, they're sleeping. They're sleeping because they have the food they want. Now they don't want to expend the energy to get more. It's really hilarious. I actually have a friend who's a zookeeper and she'll try to like interact with the red panda a little bit more. And it's a little bit playful, but for the most part, he just wants to kind of eat his snacks and then stretch out on top of his like little um lookout post they made for him and he'll just sleep there all day in the sun red pandas live in deciduous and coniferous forest and prefer a temperate climate overall they live throughout the himalayan mountains particularly in india and china despite the name red pandas are in no way related to the giant panda genetically instead red pandas are more genetically similar to raccoons both types of pandas enjoy eating bamboo however and they both have a wrist bone that can act as a thumb for grasping leaves both male and female red pandas may mate with multiple partners multiple times in one annual breeding season. Red pandas produce about two offspring at a time. Red pandas reach maturity about 18 months and live to be about nine years old. During those first 18 months, the mother takes care of her offspring. She spends more than half her time with them. Red pandas are sensitive to changes in temperature and their behavior reflects it. When it's hot, red pandas will sprawl themselves out on a tree branch. When it's cold, they'll wrap their tail around themselves to stay warm. Oh, okay. So, oh, there's a new vocabulary word, crespicular. But they sometimes exhibit nocturnal behavior. They're solitary creatures except when the mother takes care of her offspring. And they're red for camouflage. In its natural habitat, a reddish brown moss grows on the branches of many trees. So there you go. Now you guys know a ton of things about red pandas. And we have some adorable ones. Hi, pigas! We have some adorable ones running around who knows where. Jeez, they just took off. So they can move it and groove it like the little mouse deer. We finally got some things that can move a little faster. Oh, they're just snoozing. They're just passed out. Were they eating the... <gasps> wow, they were just gorging themselves on... Everybody is eating blue poppies. Cool. I didn't know the blue poppies would be so popular. Okay, haha, <laughs> popular. Oh, I didn't mean to do it like that. Why, Siri? Why all the puns? 
But that's interesting. I guess I'll add in a whole bunch of red or uh, blue poppies all over the place. Because I did not know that all of a sudden all of my pandas and my mouse deer were going to come over and just start stuffing themselves on poppies. Oh my goodness, you're so cute. Do you have any idea how cute you are? He's like, yeah, I do. I'll hold still for you. Yeah, get some good pictures. So adorable. Oh, oh I love it. I love it. All right, and then let's go ahead and put down more poppies, I suppose. Because I didn't know that everybody would be like, yay, poppies, and just start eating them. The pika have a lot of poppies. Plus, the poppies start spreading, as we saw. Let's go look at the pika's poppies, because they did spread quite a bit. Maybe I'll tuck a few, like, ferns here and there if I can. Hello, hello, ferns? Well, actually, let's do fairy grass out here. This just looks like a fairy grass area to me. All right. And there we go. And let's go check on the... Do, do, there's a pangolin running by. Let's go check on the pikas and all of their poppies. Because you can see their fields seem to be doing very, very well. This seems to be going well. All right. All right, good. So we've got a lot of a lot of plants in. We've actually really managed to get quite a nice forest started. So what about adding in a bigger, a bigger herbivore? I kind of want to put in, well, and I keep adding in ants all over the place whenever I have a bit of spare energy because I want our pangolins to be able to spread out. But I kind of want to add in um, maybe some green hawk moths over here. I've been spreading ants and mushrooms and hawk moths and everything out in the distance for quite some time now. Mm, let's see. No, don't want to buy him yet. Not a rhino just yet. I don't think. Maybe a rhino. I mean... Is it too early to add in like a rhino and an elephant? Uh, probably a little too early. Let's start with a, a deer because if I want to add in some of the larger carnivores, I want them to have some of the larger herbivores to eat. So let's put the mule deer in here, like right into the middle of the forest. And there we go. All right, or the musk deer, excuse me, not the mule deer. All right, where are you, buddy? All right, so here we go. Now we have a little population. A very snoozy, very beautiful deer. Look at them. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And let's see. They are going to focus on being strict herbivores. They eat many types of grasses, mosses, and lichen. And only use their canine teeth to fight other musk deer during the mating season. Leopards, wolves, and even some foxes prey on musk deer. Though musk deer can leap up to six meters. Holy days! They tire easily and often fall prey to more agile carnivores. Which, an agile carnivore is really the snow leopard. Have you guys ever watched a snow leopard do its hunting on the side of a mountain? Oh my gosh, it's, it's really a thing of beauty. They're so agile. It's like watching a, a powerful slinky just ping pong all over the side of a cliff, and it's gorgeous. Because of their long, sharp teeth, musk deer don't grow antlers. Their canine teeth grow continuously and are easily broken off, but can reach lengths of 10 centimeters. Holy moly! You guys can get really big. All right, and there's our red panda. Happy, happy red pandas. All right, so we're doing pretty good. I think I want to add in, actually, like another population of musk deer. Let's try doing like three populations just side by side to make like a little musk deer herd and then we'll have to see. In fact, I should have done some reading <laughs> while we were reading about the musk deer about their reproduction because their reproduction seems like it's a little bit lower and they are one of the larger herbivores. So I have a feeling we need to have several of them roaming around if we're going to keep our carnivores happy in the future. So let's see. Roam in the forests of the alpine biome. They live primarily in the Himalayan mountain range, spanning from Bhutan, or Bhutan, yeah, I think Bhutan, to Nepal to India. The musk deer's toes are very large for its size. On uneven cliff sides, it spreads its toes to gain balance. There we go. During the yearly mating season, male musk deer get very competitive. The males fight fiercely and the females go into hiding. It's up, uh, it's up to the musk sac's aroma to lure the females back out of hiding. And I think the musk deer, and I could be wrong about this, but you know, like the term musk, um, I think that they're they're one of the species that is hunted for those musk sacs that they use in perfume. And that's actually one of the main ingredients, uh, like musk sacs from like beavers was another really popular thing. I think even from otters. Um, so if you look at a lot of perfumes and the history of perfumes or like ambergris was a big thing to put into beauty products as well, which is whale throw up, whale, whale bile, um, then you can discover a lot of things where you're like, wait, I'm putting what on my body? So it's really worth it if you use any sense to like, 
like senses and like smell sense and to look into where it is made of and where it may have come from or even just the history of when people thought it was a great really awesome idea to smear ambergris all over your body all right they reach maturity about two years and they live about 12 years in the wild uh male musk deer mark their latrines they use their caudal gland to mark specific vegetation and designate it as a spot where they will poop they return to these spots to relieve themselves in the future that's very interesting and a lot of animals do that including sloths sloths usually have like one tree where they'll kind of gather in the communal communal urinary like area tree like where they're gonna all go pee and it actually is very helpful for a sloth population because that's usually how they can find each other when it's time to mate too all right so pika's are you going to have some babies yet? We're all just sitting around here. <gasps> They're going to have their babies like any minute. Oh, gosh. Like, okay. Can I skip? It's literally going to be like, oh, okay. Um, all right. Let's skip a month because I want to see if we have some Pika babies. All right. We're going to, we're going to skip a month. All right. Look goes. And we're going to see if we have any Pika babies. All right. Oh, I got quite a bit of income from that. Oh, and you have to wait three days before you're able to do it again or something like that. That is so cool. Okay. <gasps> we have nine little juveniles somewhere. Who knows where? Maybe they're the same size as everybody else, but we do have Pika babies now. Huzzah! That'll be very useful. I have no idea where they are. I have no idea if they just look like the, the adults. Maybe. Oh, it's this one. <gasps> it's a juvenile Pika. Oh, it's so cute. Hi, little ones. Hi! Oh my goodness! I love this biome. It's so beautiful. This biome is gorgeous. It's so beautiful. And we have nine juveniles over here too! Okay, good. I wonder how long it'll take before those juveniles will grow up. But we'll have to see if we can just let our Pika territory kind of gently continue spreading. And that's really fun because that gets us closer to the red pandas babies too. <gasps> that would be so cool! All right, and 70 days until the pangolin reproduce. So things are going well there. And then the deer, how long would they take? Like 300 days. So yeah, it's going to be a long time before they reproduce. And the marmots, yeah, long time. But the pika is not such a long time. So we might start adding in some of the, uh, maybe a fox or something to start eating all of the little ones that we've got pretty soon. But I think we're doing pretty good at getting a much better firm base established before we start throwing predators at everything so in fact i'm even going to throw down and we'll have to see if this is a little too much or not i'm even going to throw down another one of the um the little deer mouse there we go there you go little ones we'll throw down a couple of you guys in a couple places and hopefully hopefully it'll all work out all right i'll even put one over here there we go all right well we'll have to leave this be for a little bit and i will see you guys next time and we will see how our himalayan biodome does and then we'll even add in some of our predators so until then guys bye bye